Adjustment clips were added in Final Cut Pro 11.1. And at first I thought, what's the big deal we've had adjustment layers for forever? But the more I use adjustment clips, the more I realize that these are way crazier than we first realized. To apply an adjustment clip, I'll just go up to edit, then we can select add adjustment clip. Again, you need to be in Final Cut Pro 11.1 and that will add in this adjustment clip. Now the benefit of an adjustment clip is let's extend this out over the duration of my project. We can go over to my effects and let's say that I want to blur all of these shots at the same time. I can look up the Gaussian blur and go ahead and apply that directly onto the adjustment clip. Then if we drag up this blur amount, you can see that not only is this first shot blurred, but so is the second shot and the third shot. So essentially an adjustment clip applies an effect across the board to any shots that are underneath. So again, that might not seem like that big of a deal if you've already been using adjustment layers. But there's actually a lot more that comes with adjustment clips that I didn't first realize. The first feature that comes with adjustment clips that we didn't previously have is the ability to add transitions to them. I did previously talk about this in my Final Cut Pro 11.1 update video, but there's actually some more tips and tricks that I wanna show you in this video. Let's go ahead and simply add in an adjustment clip that's the same duration as this last shot. I'm gonna select it with my range selection tool, pressing R, and then I'm going to push option A, and that will create an adjustment clip that's the same duration. Let's say I want to apply a bunch of color grades to this shot, and then I want to show off to people how those color grades are affecting this particular video. Well, we can go ahead and look up the custom LUT loader inside of our effects. Then we can load in a specific LUT. I'll just go ahead and use one from my buddy, Dylan John, and we could try this bolder standard look. Maybe we'll back it off just a little bit in the mix. Maybe we're not quite happy with how the edges are looking. Let's add in a vignette and we can apply that onto our shot. And we're gonna take it just a little bit too far so that you can actually clearly see the benefits of these transitions. So now that we have our color grade applied, we now want to show the user how our color grade is affecting this particular shot. All we're going to do is go to our transitions and let's go to our wipes and we can just add in a simple wipe transition directly onto the adjustment clip. We can go ahead and shorten this adjustment clip if we want. So here's the original shot and then it's going to wipe on with our new custom LUT. And because this is an adjustment clip and not directly on our main shot, we can very easily extend out the duration of this transition and pushing play, we now have a much slower wipe. But you can also use it to introduce a blur. So we could go ahead and apply the Gaussian blur effect. I'm just gonna blur it like crazy to really show the effect. And now as it wipes on, we are blurring the shot nicely and we can go ahead and select that crop so that the edges are also blurred. So that's just one simple way we could use the transitions, but there's another really big benefit of being able to apply transitions. Taking a look at these two shots, you'll notice that as I get to the edge, we have that red line. That indicates that there's no more media on that particular shot. And so if I were to apply a transition with Command T, you'll notice that I get this error that's saying, hey, there's not enough extra media beyond the clip edges to create the transition. Normally you would just have to create the transition and you'll notice previously my video was 40 seconds long, now it's only 39. This can introduce a whole host of issues like getting your music out of sync or maybe the timing on your edit isn't quite right. It is annoying, but there are workarounds and I've actually created a video on some of those workarounds, which you can check out later. That being said, we can now use adjustment clips to solve this specific problem. So I'm gonna push Command Z to undo everything. And instead, let's push Option A to add in an adjustment clip. Then from there, we can go to our transitions and I'm gonna go ahead and apply my glitch transitions pack. So I'll look up FCB's glitch transitions and we can just load in pretty much any of these. Let's load in this glitch 11 and applying that on, we can push play and see how that glitch transition is taking place in our adjustment clip. So all we need to do is line up that center point of the glitch transition. And now we should have a perfect transition between the two clips. So if we shorten this down, we now just have this floating variation of the transition over the top of our timeline. That being said, this isn't a perfect fix. For example, if I made this transition just a simple cross dissolve, we wouldn't see anything happen between the two shots. This only works if your specific transition happens to cover the entire screen. So in this example, I'm using the glitch transitions, which you can see are clearly covering up the entire shot, which is making the transition work much better.
we can also use adjustment clips for getting really nice, smooth, easy zooms. What we can do is come to this last shot and let's say I want to create kind of a dolly zoom effect. So you'll see that this aerial shot is moving towards the city. That's perfect. So I'm gonna push R, select that shot and push option A. That's gonna give me the adjustment clip the same duration as that clip. Now we can come over here and select the crop tool. You can also get that with shift C. The crop tool has this really handy feature called Ken Burns, and this is a great way to get smooth zooms on a shot. So let's go ahead and select the Ken Burns effect. What's awesome about adjustment clips is previously with adjustment layers, if you applied a Ken Burns effect, you wouldn't be able to see the underlying shot. It was impossible to know where you're zooming in on. So we can go ahead and drag this box, shrinking that down. The green box is the starting point. The red box is the end point. We want to flip these. We are going to start zoomed in and slowly zoom out. So I'm going to flip these two shots by pressing these two arrows and we can push done. And pushing play, you can see that we now have this really cool looking dolly zoom effect on the city and the exterior trees. We could even shorten the zoom just by adjusting the adjustment clip to be much faster. So now that zoom is happening way faster. We're zooming out, showing the city and the trees. Okay, really, really quickly, if this video has been helpful to you in any way, consider pressing subscribe. We just crossed 75,000 subscribers, which is absurd. And I'm really trying to hit 100,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Another super handy feature with adjustment clips that we didn't previously have with adjustment layers is that you'll notice if I push option A, and apply this adjustment clip. If we take a look up here at the project thumbnail, that adjustment clip is no longer showing up in the thumbnail, which is really incredible. Previously, if I were to go in and apply my adjustment layer over the top of that, this adjustment layer has a thumbnail which is going to cover up our thumbnail in our project. So this was just a slight annoyance and it's really nice to see that that's been addressed. Now, if you watched my channel previously, you might have seen me release my Adjustment Plus plugin. And if taking a look over here on the right, you can see that my Adjustment Plus plugin comes with a whole host of extra options. That being said, Adjustment Plus is not an adjustment clip. So it doesn't fully receive all of the benefits that adjustment clips have, except for the fact that adjustment clips come with this other super handy feature. That is that we can apply effects as adjustment clips. So if we come over here to my effects, you'll notice that I previously set up my adjustment plus plugin as an effect which we can apply. So we can select that and push option A, and now we've just added an adjustment layer which also receives all of the benefits of my free Adjustment Plus plugin. So I can easily add in my LUTs, I can adjust the exposure and the contrast, but we can also apply stuff like the Ken Burns zoom effect and transitions. It's really the best of all worlds. So make sure you get my free Adjustment Plus plugin linked down below. The last big benefit that comes specifically with adjustment clips is that they have their own role applied to them. Why is this handy? Taking a look here, I have blurred out all of my shots, but maybe I want to visually see my timeline without any effects or LUTs or color grades applied to the clips. So what we can do is come over to our index, you'll go to your roles, and you'll notice that we have our adjustment clips up here at the top. I can deselect those with the checkbox, and now none of these shots are receiving that blur treatment across the board, or if I applied color grades, those wouldn't take place. And on top of that, you can also export out a video with your adjustment clips stripped out. This is incredibly handy if you're working with somebody in DaVinci Resolve and they need to color grade your footage. Let's say that adjustment clips are in fact enabled on my timeline, but I want to export. We'll just go up to our share menu and then select export file. We'll go to roles and we can change the roles over to multi-track QuickTime movie. From there, we can go ahead and strip out all adjustment clips. And now when we export this, it's going to be a raw version of your video without any of the custom LUTs, color grades, anything like that. If this video was helpful, consider helping me get to 100,000 subscribers. We just crossed 75,000. Thank you so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.